things. So also harmony could be living peacefully. Another one says its parts are combined into a pleasant arrangement. Also harmony could be an agreement in action, opinion, feeling, or being in one accord. So if we have these definitions all for harmony, I now want us to relate it to our homes and relate it to our day-to-day -day activities in our family. Harmony in our homes, it is in different parts. Like what we treated last week, spiritual harmony in our marriages. I know our family coach will quickly go over spiritual harmony before we go into another type of harmony that we need in our homes. And so this morning, I want us to go over spiritual harmony once again, at least for those of us that are joining us for the first time, or probably you missed the one of the last week, so that we know what it is to have a spiritual harmony in our homes before we go to the next one for today, sir. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, once again, good afternoon, our listeners. It is well with you and your home and your families in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Ma, before I answer your question, All right. the brief introduction mm -hmm. you gave this morning actually you know, was in line with what the Spirit of God uh, placed in my mind you know, this morning. Uh, your definition. Mm -hmm. the, the Spirit of God showed me a verse of scripture wow. this morning that uh, explains what harmony is all about. And that is Isaiah chapter 52, mm -hmm. uh, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 8. I would love us to start from that note. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices, they shall sing together. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord bring back Zion. Wow. Now, what is harmony in this scripture? We all know what singing is all about. Yes. You know, two, three people coming together to yes. sing. So singing together is about harmony. Right. Everybody bringing his or her voice and they place it together and it becomes one. Mm -hmm. And then for that to happen, the Bible says they shall see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. So in marriage, we must always remember that marriage is a business of two people. Yeah. So the two of them must see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is there must be agreement. Mm. There must be kind of synergy. Mm. And that is why it is very important to get it right, right from the beginning. Because if one uh, party in the home is ready to harmonize and the other party is not ready. So you can obtain harmony in a situation where the two of them are not ready to see eye to eye. Mm. And so if, if the person you get married to is a kind of person that can never see eye to eye with you, mm -hmm. harmony will become very, very difficult. And that's why we appeal to our youth, the Thank young you. people who are yet to go into marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a complex thing. So you must marry the person you can harmonize mm -hmm. with, the mm -hmm. person with whom you can see eye to eye, the person that can be on the same page with you on every life issue. Mm. Having said that, um, last week we were talking about spiritual harmony. I remember I said that it is important for us to differentiate between religiosity and spirituality. Mm. It will help us if we know what is spiritual and we know what is religious. Most of the things that destroy harmony in the home are the religious part of our faith, not, you know, the spiritual, uh, uh, real spiritual issues, you know. And so we talk about 
the kind of church they should go, how they should pray, like yes. prayer, for instance. Prayer is communicating with God. That's right. I mean, if we understand it like that, we know our God is a hearing God. He that formed the ear, will he not hear? Mm. That's what the Bible says. That's right. But if somebody says, I want to shout, mm. another person says, I want to do my own silently. silently. Either shouting or silent, that does not make the prayer. The prayer is about your link with God. Mm. So the physical aspect is a religious aspect, and that's why we are allowed to separate ourselves. Mm. You know, and the matter is understanding. This is the way this person loves to, to do pray. this. And this is the way I love to do this. So while you are shouting, she's doing her own. The most important thing is that God is not complaining. <laughs> God is not saying because you are not shouting, I'm not hearing you. It is not the louder your prayer, the more God hears you. Mm -hmm. No, there is something like that. The more pure you are, blessed are the pure in, in heart, heart, for they shall see God. God. Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord, mm -hmm. and who shall dwell in his holy place? He that has clean, clean hands. hands and pure heart. Mm -hmm. So once you fulfill that condition, whether you shout or you do it quietly, God will hear you. So the physical aspect of our faith should not be allowed to separate us in the whole. We just have to understand what we are used to, what is convenient for us, and we discuss as a family, and we bring the two together, and then we move on. Thank you very much for that, um, for that um, explanation once again. For those of us that were not um, on last week, Modi, to listen to what we said. Like I told you, you can as well listen to the full package of the program on our YouTube channel. And today, sir, you said we have quite a number of faces of harmony in our homes. We just talked about spiritual harmony. We've talked about different kinds of harmony in the last two, three weeks. This morning, what are we looking at in the aspect of harmony? Well, maybe we should start today um, on the subject of physical harmony. Physical harmony. Because marriage also is about two people physically coming together. And um, when we talk about physical harmony, we're talking about ability of the couple to do things physically together. together. Mm. You know, husband and wives must be able to sit down together. Like we always say that the three-seater chair mm. in the sitting room is not for visitors. Really? It is always for the husband and wife. Okay. So when you have visitors, let them sit at the other uh, chairs, other seats. That three-seater is for <laughs> you and your wife to sit side by side. Really? You know, you should not be ashamed of your spouse mm. sitting very close with you. Mm. You must be comfortable mm. to sit down together. They must be able to see the two of you together. Mm. So you must be happy with each other's presence. Being in each other's company. Yes. You must go out together, sometimes dress we are the same thing, Close. and if it mm. cannot be the same material, maybe the same color, so that when the you know the, the wife is wearing something blue, the husband is wearing something blue. When people see you together, they love the appearance, mm. they love the harmony. You know, sit together, uh, sleep together on the same bed, physical presence. Okay. Okay, go to the bedroom together, hmm. bath together, hmm. sit down at the table and eat together. All right, mm -hmm. go to work together. Eat Sometimes together. the husband should go and pay a visit, a surprise visit to the wife in her office. Hmm. The same thing the wife 
should go and pay a surprise visit. Your presence should make you happy, each of you happy. That your wife is now present should make you to be excited. So these are elements of physical harmony. The two people involved in marriage must not be Tom and Jerry, like mm. the uh, popular cartoon. <laughs> they must not be living like cat and dog. Mm. They should flow together physically. You see, wherever you see a, 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 a success, successful home, it will come to a time in their journey of marriage that the two of them will start to look like each other. That's right. <laughs> now, that's where the issue of physical harmony. You know, they I are can chemist. testify to that. I'm yeah. really looks like you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, you will look at them and they will look like, uh, you know, brother and sister. Wow. They will look like sibling. Mm. Because of that closeness, their chemistry is, you know, uh, binding, bend, blending together mm. and the uh, Physically, they are so comfortable, they are happy with one another, and they will start looking like, when you look at them, when you look at the children, you will not even be able to say, <laughs> does it look like daddy, or does oh, it look mommy. like mommy? Even wow. mommy and daddy uh, begin to look alike. Wow. That's physical harmony. Well, sir, on the issue of this physical harmony, I have heard quite a number of people talk about it, different kind of problems, I mean, springing up from this kind of a physical harmony. Let me start from the issue of driving together, going to church together and all that. I have a couple that once told me, he said, I cannot go to anywhere with my wife. He will take her car and I will take my home. And I said, uh, why? He said she complains too much about my driving. And so I don't always like going anywhere with her. Even if we are going to church, we'll take our car with our children. Or probably if the children want to come with me, they will stay in my car. But we will drive the same car together. <laughs> what kind of attitude is that? How well, can they how can they make a synergy out of that? Is it possible? If on a very simple thing like that they cannot harmonize, how would they be able to harmonize on complex matters? Mm. Also, it is lack of understanding. You know, if you are a man and you are driving, your wife is beside you to correct you when you make mistakes. It is because she doesn't want you to die. You could as well drive yourself recklessly and kill yourself. But if you are conscious that somebody is beside you and is going to caution you, then there is no problem about that. Well, she really, you all the time. You know, it should not be complained about. You know, all the time. Honestly speaking. Uh, our wives uh, like to talk about everything when they sit down beside. My <laughs> wife also do the same. She I will just say, honey. <laughs> <laughs> then you understand you know? the code. <laughs> when she starts to say, honey, you know, and you reduce this. Uh, driving is about <laughs> making calculations and all that. You know, the person sitting beside the driver, honestly, is always the best driver. Mm. It's just like football game. You know, the spectators are always the best players. Mm, that's right. You understand? <laughs> but the one behind the steering understands some of the calculations it's making. Mm. But at times, you can be wrong. Mm. You can make wrong decisions. You can make wrong calculations. Mm. So the issue is that rather than now saying that they should not go out together, what they should do is sit down and communicate, mm. discuss. Harmony is not possible in the absence of communication mm. because there will always be differences, mm. either physically, spiritually. The two of them are not the same. That's where we started from. That's right. They did not have the same nature. They are not having the same nurture. They were mm. not brought together the same way. They have a lot of differences. They are individuals, mm. you know, with separate uh, entities, everything, characteristics, mm -hmm. way of thinking, way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So to make, like I said in our first uh, episode on harmony, to make 
one out of two yes. is a serious job. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of understanding. It takes a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. All right? So the person that is talking is not because he hates the husband that is driving. That's why he's complaining. No. It's just to take caution, mm -hmm. you know. So after they get back, the man should just sit at that. My dear, you see, I appreciate I everything, everything <laughs> that you are saying. Ha, where is the ego, sir? You know, mm. you see, mm. ego mm. will not help harmony. Thank you. Any man who wants to keep his ego will not be able to keep peace in his family. Mm. It's either you keep your ego or you keep your peace. So if you are going to have peace in your home, Thank you must you. learn to bury your ego. Thank you, sir. What is what is in husband and wife sitting down to discuss issues? So nothing should be Some men about will that. feel that why would an ordinary woman talk to me on how to drive? When did you start driving that you'll be telling me how to drive? Any, any man that sees a woman as ordinary mm -hmm. should not marry. Thank or, you. It's not a it's not a marriage material. Mm. How can you see your wife as ordinary? Mm. What's ordinary in her? As a complete human being, mm. wonderfully and fearfully created by God. Amen. And Amen. she has, I mean, for example, I taught my wife how to drive. Mm. That does not mean that when we are together, you know, on the road, she cannot correct me. I am not Mr. Know It All. We must not assume because, I mean, assume that because we are men, uh, we know everything. No. So the issue is that they should just sit down and discuss. If yeah, there are going to be harmony on any little matter, they must learn to open up and discuss. I appreciate what you are, you are saying, but I would love you to say less of those things because it can also create distraction for me. Yeah. Are you getting the point now? That's For right. example, you know, there was a particular day we were coming from Mushoku. My wife was sitting beside me. You know, I overtook a particular car, and another one was coming at a distance. I made my calculations. You understand? But immediately I overtook the car. My wife shouted, Oh, me. You know, <laughs> I just pretended as if I didn't hear because. If I start to address that issue now, I would become fearful and in the process of trying to, you know, become uh, uncertain of what to do, the one that was coming will come and meet me there. So after I successfully navigated the place, I said, you should have at least let me complete the process of overtaking. Me too, I don't want to die. Hmm. <laughs> so it's just about understanding it's about effective communication hmm, I like that well if you check your time now it's about 25 minutes past 12 on High Praise Radio and the program is Family Roundtable I want to say this to everyone listening to us or probably if you're on our Facebook live and you're watching us this program Family Roundtable is where we discuss family blueprints, what we can do to have a successful home, what we can do, it is practical, what we can do to have a good home. And I'm telling you, if there is a Yoruba adage that says, Bili o badu. Oni Oni lumi. That is to tell you that for you to have a successful business, for you to have a successful ministry, your home must be in good shape. Exactly. Your marriage must be in good order. That is why God has laid it in our hearts to start this program so that you can learn one, two, or three things from this program. So if you're listening to us, I would always like you to listen attentively and you pick what you know that you can at least change in your marriage to give you a successful home. We're still on harmony this week. And you said something that for us to have harmony in our home, there is one ingredient that is so vital, and that is good communication. Yeah, exactly. Effective communication. Effective communication, yes. Because 
sometimes I can communicate with you and it may not be effective. Yeah. I can argue with you. It's, it, argument is a kind of communication, yeah. but it might not be effective. Yeah. So in marriage, for you to have harmony in your home, there must be effective, effective communication. communication. I said something last week, man, mm. that one of the most important ingredients of communication is listening. Listening, yes. You are not a good communicator if you don't master the art of listening. Mm. Listening is the most difficult aspect of communication. Mm. We prefer to do all the talking. We don't want to listen. Mm. And in most cases, when husbands and wife, uh, husbands and wives are discussing, mm. the other one that is not talking is hearing to respond, not That's hearing right. to understand. Mm. That's right. That's uh -huh. right. So you must... When, especially women, we... Yeah. we so once your husband is talking, mm. don't start to construct what you will use Today. to counter hey. what mm. he is saying. Mm. <laughs> Listen with the intent or the intention of understanding what this person is saying. Because if you don't understand yourselves, you cannot harmonize. In mm. fact, it is possible for the two of them will be saying the same thing. Mm. But because they are saying it differently, and they don't take the time to actually understand themselves, and they will still be arguing, arguing mm. endlessly. And sincerely, they are saying the same thing. Mm. But they are not taking good time to listen, to understand one another. Mm. And it, you know, one of the things that physical harmony does mm. is to bridge the gap, mm. you know, Bridge the gap. The more you are together, the more the possibility of communication. Okay. Well, again, sir, I I have a reservation about this particular part of the physical harmony you talked about. Mm. Wearing the same clothes together, sleeping, sleeping together, together, sitting, sitting together, down together, sitting together, sitting together going together. out together. I once met a couple. Sir, if they are going to wear shirts, they wear the same shirt. The same. They wear the same trousers, the same jean, they wear the same native wears and all that. But, sir, they can fight tomorrow's fight today. <laughs> the two of them, sir, they can fight. If there is anything called tomorrow's fight, they can fight tomorrow's fight today. They can fight tomorrow's fight to do. Mm -hmm. But they wear the same clothes together. They wear they do things together. So in, in that kind of situation, you see, the physical harmony is there, sir. Okay. But there is no harmony. Okay. Oh, well, like we said, physical harmony is not the only thing. Yes, yes. It's not the only thing. There are other things. When okay. things like that happen, then you begin to see people who are playing hypocrisy, mm -hmm. make believe life. Mm -hmm. And it is very common among those of us who are believers, mm -hmm. especially going to church. We want to create an impression. Mm -hmm. We want to present ourselves to be what we are not. Mm -hmm. It is good to dress together, you know, like I have a couple in my church like that. Since I've known them for, uh, I mean, let me say since they are uh, been married uh, for close to 10 years now. I have never seen them coming to church in different uh, type of dress. They wear. Well, sometimes we can dress differently. Of that course, of not course. That, is, that does not mean we don't have harmony. Mm -hmm. That does not mean we don't have harmony. This couple, you know, they dress completely together, but theirs is very real. You know, but if it is a case of made believe, mm -hmm. like just to create an impression, it is very, very wrong. Mm -hmm. You see, the rule about marriage is a husband and wife must live to please each other and not any other person. So, live to please your wife as a man, live to please your husband as a woman. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, if they are dressing together and then 
they can it's always uh, fighting and fighting and mm -hmm. fighting then you know that they are hypocrites they are playing hypocrisy they are they, they place more value on pleasing the society mm -hmm. creating impression on the society than having peace among themselves mm -hmm. So, so what are the things that we can do to achieve this physical harmony? And while you are doing that, I want you to tilt a bit towards the children. Okay. Is the, the, the issue of children, at least I want to draw a bit out of it on physical harmony. Yeah. Because sometimes you see the man chastising the, the, the child and the woman bringing the child at the back to tell the woman, no, no, why do you want him to be so mad and look, so I feel like you're so close, so you know, that kind of a thing. Is it part of physical harmony? Yeah, uh, let's look at it this way. Physical harmony is a product of mental and spiritual harmony. We cannot achieve physical harmony in the absence of spiritual harmony and mental harmony. That's now, we have talked about spiritual harmony last week. Let's look at mental harmony. Mental harmony talks about the way we think. Our mind is the seat of our lives. A man is as good as his mind. A woman is as good as her mind. And so, each of them with their different minds, different ways of thinking, must, you know, be able to come together and begin to think alike. How will they think alike? That is when they start to understand, study themselves, understand the nature of each other. And that brings it, us back to the first program we did. Yeah, yeah. the first episode. Mm -hmm. Like, studying your partner is what will make you to be able to help him or her. In somebody can be, yeah, Somebody can be sincerely wrong. He's wrong or she's wrong, but it's out of sincerity. He or she does not mean any harm. That's the way he thinks. That's the way he sees things. That's perception. But for you to come together on that level, you have to first of all understand this person and then communicate. So we can't do without communicating. We can't do without understanding one another. And so if I understand the way, for example now, the way women think is different in many respects from the way men think. Because even uh, medical science has confirmed that our brains are wired differently. All right? Women are relational in their thinking, whereas men are go-getters in their thinking. What concerns women most are things that has to do with um, relationship. What happens in the home? Do we have something to eat? <laughs> are the children okay? Look at their socks. What would the outsider saying with my children? I mean, about my children with this kind of torn uniform? Is their books okay? Are they, you know, pay school fees uh, and, and all that? That's what the man thinks. I mean, the woman thinks about. Daddy, an average man would think you will tell him do tell him because. He is not thinking about Ponje. He is thinking about how to build his career. Mm. He is thinking about, oh, my business should have been better than this. Mm. He is thinking about, my ministry should have improved more than this. He is thinking that we need to improve on this house. We need to complete this project. We need to start a new investment. Those are the, they are go-getters. But women think more. So, how do we harmonize the two? That's the issue. So you have to understand that if your wife is making, I mean, discussing in one direction, you have to understand that that's the way they think. And it is very necessary. Hmm. The man who wants to build business, will he not eat? 
Yoruba you know, you know, you know, if you are a man and uh, your children are not feeding well, what kind of a man? They will not even blame the mother. They will be talking about the man as if he's irresponsible. So we have to see that both are necessary and complementary. So you have to understand the way a woman thinks as a man. And you also have to understand the way a man thinks as a woman. So that the two of you can bring your uh, perception together and form one out of the two. Thank you very much, sir. We're still talking about harmony in our homes. How we can achieve that, how we can attain harmony in our relationship, at least as husband and wife, how, how, how we can get to that level in our marriage. And you've been listening to our family coach, Reverend Dr. Ima Solu or Lactile. And this is High Praise Radio, Oliole Ibadan. And for those of you joining us for the first time, or probably you are wrong with us on our Facebook page or on the radio, we have a grace where you can make a call, at least make your own contribution, or if you have other views to what we are saying, you can still call on 0703-3145-962. If you are calling us from outside Nigeria, you can use plus 234-70-3314-5962. We are still talking about physical harmony in our homes. Sir, on many occasions, you will see a woman. Let me, I want to cite an example from an experience. By the time you start telling the man, okay, you do this, do this, do this, the man will be like, do you think I cannot think on my own? Do you think I don't have anything upstairs? Why must it be every time you tell me this, you tell me that? And you know, that kind of attitude will make the woman coil. That kind of attitude will make the woman definitely coil. And in that kind of a situation, what do you think the woman can do in striving to achieve a physical harmony in their home? Well, um, let me first say that any man who thinks that his wife is unnecessary should not have married. Because if you think that you are complete in yourself, then why are you looking for another person to come and join you? So it's an indication that that person is not a marriage material. But she's in need and already. they are in need of it. That's why we are saying that young people should learn to get it right. I, I think that, you should just target it towards them this morning. Yeah. Let us get it right because the case you just dis described now, there are some that sincerely yours. Hmm. In my little experience in marriage counseling for close to 30 years, hmm. she just has, I mean, how to manage the situation hmm. because you cannot divorce yourself from yourself. That's the man, that's who he is. Hmm. And it takes only God to change a man. There is something she can do than just pray and trust God for a miracle. When the person you got married to begin to see you as an unnecessary person, mm. the only time he needs you is when he wants to sleep with you. Mm. So you are not a wife. You are a sexual object. Mm. You are a toy. So don't marry somebody who does not respect your view. And it starts from the beginning. When a man believes that whatever I say must be final, mm. that's not a marriage material. The man is not the only person in the marriage. Yes, he is the head. He should coordinate, but he should not do everything. Mm. The brain coordinates the body, but it cannot perform the function of the hand. Mm. How can the brain, imagine the agony of someone that has a stroke, for example, mm. and the hand, the brain is still there, 
Mm. The brain is telling the hand to move. To the move. hand is not moving. Mm. So there is already a disharmony. Let the brain start to perform the function of the hand then. <laughs> so they must learn to, you know, complement each other. Mm -hmm. And they must also understand that the two of us cannot think the same way. Like somebody says, if the two of you are the same, one of you is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So the two of you should be a, a, a whole. It's like a, two halves of a whole. So bring your own idea. I bring my own idea. Then we form a one. Mm. But sincerely, yours, I've also seen be human beings that are, you know, so how do I des describe them? Difficult to harmonize with mm. because they are like, uh, you know, so single wedding will end, marriage will start. Yes. And I was telling the young man, look, this person, this fellow beside you is not a wife, he's a woman. So whether or not she will become a wife is a different thing. Everybody gets married to a woman. On your wedding day, you just got hooked to a woman. And the woman also got hooked to a man. But becoming a husband and becoming a wife is another thing. So the person who says, uh, this person cannot contribute is uh, saying rubbish. Is saying rubbish. He is not the husband. He's just a man in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so physical harmony transcends sitting together, sleeping together, yeah. laughing together. It has to be start the from mental harmony oh. and a spiritual harmony. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to harmonize with somebody to who is a child of God, mm. who has the spirit of God in him. Mm. Imagine that these two people have the spirit of God. Mm. For example, uh, one of my spiritual fathers uh, is a professor emeritus in Illinois. He told us a story recently. Long time ago when they were still very young mm. and their children were young, they were going for a conference in a, a Plato state. And the person, I mean, the place is very cold. But just to make the boy, their son, look good, the man went, I mean, took uh, the boy to the barber shop, they had the hair cut. That did not go down well with the woman. Because she was thinking that uh, the man needs, I mean, the boy needs the hair. Because of cold. Because of cold. Wow. So, the, the, the woman was very angry at the husband for taking the boy to cut the hair. She was just angry. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the man now, you know, stayed away. At a point, he was thinking that, and so he said when he wanted to pray the following morning, he knelt and said, God, I want to be angry with my wife. <laughs> and I don't want to sin against you. How do I do it? Holy Spirit, teach, teach me, me to how be to be angry with my wife <laughs> without sinning against you. Can you imagine? Oh, God. <laughs> he was praying that prayer. And of course, the Holy Spirit was speaking. Wow. And this, the Holy, he said the Holy Spirit told him that she's not only your wife, she's also your sister. Mm. How can you be angry with your sister, born of the same mother? Mm. So the way you can be angry with your sister, born of the, of the same mother. mother, as the way you should go and be angry with her. Mm. And then she just he just remembered that what will my sister do? That I will not be able. He said when he finished praying, he just walk up to the wife, you know, and tap her cheek. I wow. blow me. He <laughs> <laughs> just said, ah, bro, me. And now I said, leave me, child. And now it's the end of the book. Wow. <laughs> you know why? What solved the problem? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. 
because this person is a child of God to the core. The, wo the woman too is a child of God to the core. I am appealing to our sons and daughters. Don't marry a religious person. Marry a spiritual person. Thank you. Marry somebody that can hear God when he can no longer hear you. Mm. When there is an issue and he refuses to hear you, mm. God will speak to him and bring him back to you. That's right. When there is an issue and she can no longer hear you, God will speak to her and she will, God will force her back to mm. you. And then there will always be harmony. It's not that there won't be issues. Every family has issues. But when you want to get angry as a man, the Holy Spirit will caution you. Sir, let me ask you this. Do you normally have issues? With we do. Wow. We are real human beings. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> you understand? Except we want to we want to deceive us. And I don't I don't like deception. I don't like hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I always say it in the church. The person that really understands the real Amos mm. is my wife. Everybody thinks that the pastor is an angel. He is not. He's also a human being. He has feelings. He also made mistakes. Mm. You know, but the bottom line is that the Holy Spirit has access to the two of us. Mm. So that any time an issue happens, of course, the Holy Spirit will speak to and you see, there is a rule in our home. And the rule is, when there is an issue, and uh, it looks as somebody is not happy and all that, the other person should say, can we talk? And it is our rule that if any of us, any of the two of us says, can we talk, the other person must never say no. Hmm. Uh -huh. So it's like, can we talk? Yes. Then we start talking. Mumba. And then like somebody will say, eh, Mumba. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like Mumba. <laughs> Can we talk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, and then the person who said, Can we talk? We start the talk. <laughs> I noticed this, I noticed that, I noticed this. What happened here? What happened there? And then it will, the other person will respond. And in the process of uh, talking, we'll get to know what was wrong, and then we we'll we we'll get to solve the problem. Well, our time is actually fast spent. What I would like to say on this is, the greatest partner in marriage is the Holy Spirit. There is no success in marriage without the person. In the fact, in life Spirit. generally, mm. it is. Going, navigating life without the Holy Spirit is horrible. I can't just imagine myself in this world without the Holy Spirit. I can't. I don't know how people who don't have the Holy Spirit to assist them. I don't mm. know how they are coping. They don't have com com companion. They don't have comforter. Mm. Uh, the Holy Spirit knows the way. Mm. It can show you the way. Like uh, in, in Psalm 32, uh, if you read it from verse 8 to 10, it's talk, God was saying that I will, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you will go. I will guide you with my own eyes. And he said, don't be like the horse or moon who lacks understanding, whose mouth must be heading with teeth and bridles. The issue is that if you don't have the Holy Spirit to assist you in critical points in life, you will lead a very painful life. Mm. There's no doubt about it. It won't work if they don't allow the Holy Spirit. So that's why I, we keep saying, and we will keep saying it, if you have not made a mistake, don't make it. Mm. Don't think that, you know, the, the first episode of this program, mm. There was a lot of argument about marrying an unbeliever. You know, Yoruba Maso, only one we come with dinner date to party with that group. And I always tell young people if you marry a child of the devil, the devil will be your father in law. And you can't stop your father in law from coming to your house. It's as simple as that. 
But so that I have an exception to it too. That one. Like I have a lady in our place. She got married to a babalawo. A Lydia, you know, in Baptist, you know, all these Lydia, our sisters, you know, they graduate to to um, Lydia. So she was dating this guy, Babalawo, full flesh Babalawo, young man. She was actually dating the guy. And, you know, it was just an ordinary dating. They were not sleeping together. You know, it was this hello brother, hello sister thing. And along the line, the lady invited him to one of the revivals in the church. And the guy was just like play play thing. You understand? And the guy went to the church. And lo and behold, sir, the guy gave his life to Christ. Today, the guy is actually burning for Christ. Today. Full-fledged Babala Musa. But today, the guy is actually thanking God that he was able to marry the lady. Because so many times, he will come and ask me for new Bible to give to his own convert, sir. Now, if I get you right, mm -hmm. the Babala was already converted before the got married. Before they got married, yes. So she did not marry an unbeliever. But she dated an unbeliever. I'm not, I mean, dating, dating is a different thing entirely. Okay. Do you understand? We're talking about marriage now. Hmm. It would have been a different thing if the Babala was not converted. Okay, she married him as an as, as, as a, a Babala. And uh, uh, if it would have been a different thing hmm. if she married. Him hmm. as a babala, hmm. a man in whom the devil is sitting hmm. at the throne of his heart. I mean, it's it's going to be a different ball game. But I have different. a sister who is an evangelist, sir. Who is an evangelist preaching the gospel all around the world, but the husband is a Muslim. Yes, there are cases like that. There are, you know, for every rule. There are exceptions. That's right. What That's I right. always say is this. If as a young woman. Be alone, you sir. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Can you look at God on the face and yeah. say, You led me to this? Mm. So if, if that is where God has led you, mm. I'm sure you will succeed. Yeah, God right. may have a reason. I agree God you may have right. a reason for sending someone on a particular assignment. Mm. But the question we must ask ourselves with sincerity mm. is that those who are getting married to unbelievers, believers. how many of them yeah. can say that it was God that, that led me there? How many of them can say that it was not my lusts mm. and my self-will mm. that led me there? That's what many of them will come back to us now. Mm. They, they come on daily yes, basis, three very months correct. after the wedding, to begin correct. to cry. Mm. I mean, and I always tell them, it's good to cry, but some cries will be too late. Mm. You know, so if, as a child of God, you have every conviction to go in a particular direction, you will be responsible to your conviction. That's right. You understand that? That's right. And you will be ready to face the consequence of your choice. Mm. If it is God, God don't make mistakes. Hallelujah. But man can make mistakes. Right. That's why I check again and check again. Cross-check with people who are more spiritual than you. Mm. Let them assist you before you run yourself into trouble. Mm. Because the issue of harmony becomes easy when the two people are hearing the same thing. Mm, thank you. Well, I, I, I have a strong feeling in my heart that somebody is listening to us and somebody is actually watching that needs to speak with you. I have that very strong impression in my spirit that somebody somewhere wants to speak with you that is having it tough in his or her marriage. I cannot actually tell who, whether a man or a woman, but I have a strong feeling in my heart that somebody wants to talk with you. Well, I I would like you, if you're listening to us or if you're watching us on our Facebook Live, 
if you feel like discussing or pouring out your mind to our family coach, I can tell you and I can say it again and again that he's a, he's a man of God, man after the heart of God. And um, it is always good to talk to someone that can actually help you. So if you have any burden in your heart that you want to discuss with him, you can definitely call him on, um, please can you tell us your phone number so that at least somebody my, can my call My number you. is 80 Again, sir. 080-33-80-5367. You can definitely call him if you have one or two things you want to discuss with him or if you have a burden that you want to share with him. I can tell you that he will definitely lead you after the heart of Christ. And on this note, people of God, we have talked about um, physical harmony today. But I am very sure that we will have to go back to physical harmony or probably another part of harmony next week by the grace of God. It's been a wonderful time knowing that you are there listening to Rose on High Praise Radio. And it's been a good time knowing that you have been blessed. It's a wonderful time with us too to have our family coach in the house, Reverend Amos Olu Oladili. I have learned so many things from him ever since we started this uh, program, Family Roundtable. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, or probably you just bumped into the channel. It's um, an online gospel radio. You can have our application you download from Google Play Store, or you log on to www.highpraiseradio.com. Until next week, that we will come your way again on this same program, Family Roundtable, on this same station, High Praise Radio. I want to say a big thank you to um, Dikin Jomi, Akisomi, Jesus Baby Doi, Sola Peters, Sister Ruth Onusodo, and to our chairman, Obasanji Oladapo Ojetino. We want to say a big thank you to every one of you that have made this day a reality on High Praise Radio. I remain yours and yours sincerely, Olori Esther Shubola Oyentiro. I am your uncle person today on the program. By the grace of God, we'll meet you next week on this program. Until then, I leave you in the hands of God Almighty. Stay tuned to us on High Praise Radio. We have lots more for you. Thank you and God bless you. Across the bridge, there's no more pain. The sun will